redneck teens with massive machines Everybody living beyond their means Brotherly love from the messed up genes Nobody wants to intervene Billboard screams your advertising Hi everybody, Dr. Anthony James here Dean and Director of Education and Medical Services for the Soma Veda College of Natural Medicine and the Thai Yoga Center, Registered College of Ayurveda and Natural Medicine, located right here in Brooksville, Florida. And uh, coming to you with, with a relatively serious topic today, which is going to be, what are we talking about? What are... What is the language of lockdown that we are using so commonly and that we're seeing on all the major media? I've been looking through all the major media. Uh, all the initials are all saying the same thing. They're using the same words. They're, they're basically on the same script. And I really want to get into it uh, about the language that we're using while we're going through this uh, viral situation that we're going through because words matter and it's something that I've, I've said before words matter especially as a healer as a therapist as a doctor as a minister the words that we use with our clients for example the words that our clients use when they're describing the the issues that they're dealing with for example all these words are extremely important and many times we can get through or to a healing crisis based entirely on the vernacular or the language that we're using so words matter and what are we talking about okay so before I get started let me give a shout out to Peggy Hall and the healthyamerican.org you should check out her website Peggy Hall at the Healthy American. Org because Peggy turned me on to this uh, uh, the idea that I needed to reach out and speak to uh, the current issue right and I'm also going to be uh, watching my time here so that I don't go um, uh, over too much you know sometimes when I rant and I get off on something I can't get off of it you guys know me uh, I'm I'm uh, uh, as my mother used to say, loquacious. Okay, so speaking of language, let's let's get right to it. Uh, first of all, the language that's being used is actually a form of manipulation and mind control, i.e., propaganda. Now, I know that some of you uh, really probably don't know uh, what propaganda is, really, or what mind control is, or that there's even such a thing, and Mind control or manipulation of the mind or propaganda is when the information that you're being presented is actually against your self-interest uh, as far as the outcomes are concerned. In other words, the objective of the languaging that's being used is to convince you to believe or to do or even to repeat something that ultimately is against your self-interest and perhaps might even be a, a complete lie, okay? So I invite you all to look up the definition of propaganda on Webster. I'm not going to go into it word for word right now because I actually want to get right to the language. Now, language can be used to clarify, unify, to elevate, to create connections, to create solidarity and closeness. We speak of the language of love, for example. So, and, and we have language in sacred text and in books and holy books and, and just good books. And, and that when you read those words, uh, you are actually elevated and you have realizations or what I call relevation, realizations that elevate as a result of just hearing the words. Uh, the Tibetans, for example, and the Bardo Thodol say, or Tibetan Book of the Dead, that just simply to hear the words of the Book of the Dead one time means that you have a distinct advantage in the Bardo or the afterlife uh, over if you had not heard those words at least. The words, words are really important, okay? 
However, words can also be used to confuse, separate, and deceive. The language of vernacular that's been used and repeated by the government and health services and the mass media, okay, uh, that these words not only meet the criteria for propaganda, but um, as far as I can tell, they are intentionally misleading. And I'm not the only one. I, I'm one of just tens of thousands of physicians and doctors and therapists and healers who are, of course, concerned about disease, of course, concerned about the health of our, our patrons, our clients, our communicants, our, our members of our churches, and so on. We are, we are as caring and considering as, as anybody could be because we've actually dedicated our life to healing and helping and serving sick people. Okay, so we're very concerned about the language that's being used because the more we research it, the more it doesn't make any sense. And I'm going to go through some of this right now, and uh, hopefully you'll get where I'm coming from and that it's not just uh, hyperbolic and I don't have some agenda in trying to convince you to, uh, also to believe or do something that's against your self-interest or the family or friends or community. Okay, so what words bother you the most and why? Words, and I mean words that are being used right now about this uh, so-called uh, pandemic. I mean, there is a pandemic. There is COVID. Uh, we're, we're not denying that. That's, that's absolutely true. What we're saying is, is that A, it's not as bad as we're being led to believe. And part of how we're being led to believe is with all these words and these specialized emphasis that have outcomes that are not health related. Not health related, okay? So let me know in the comments down here. Be sure to subscribe. You know, if you like my rants or if you like my other videos on health practices, be sure to subscribe and share. It's it's the only way I can get the word out, okay? And I'm not always ranting. Sometimes I show you a little bit of technique and give you a little theory and philosophy about Ayurveda or natural medicine or Native American medicine. Today I'm feeling inspired. I'm wearing a Turtle Island t-shirt, uh, heart to heart, talking about the heartbeat of Earth. All right, so here we go. First word that I want to get into really quickly here is lockdown. Okay, the word lockdown. Okay, well, n n no, we're, we're, we're not in a lockdown. I'm not in a lockdown. We're actually free to go. Okay, what does lockdown mean? What, is, what does that phrase even mean? Well, first of all, where have we heard that word before? Well, up until the month before last, the only place we ever used that term or heard that term was in reference to persons incarcerated in jail and or prisons. Prisoners are on lockdown in jail. And what it means is, is because they're prisoners, they are not free to come and go. Now, I'm free to come and go. There's no guard outside my door uh, who will inhibit my progress if I decide to walk out my door and walk down the street, walk out my door, get in my vehicle, and go and do anything that I want to do. So I, I'm not on lockdown, okay? But that's a term that's been used uh, quite often, and even to the degree of mandated or mandatory or government-imposed lockdowns in different areas. They also, of course, use different terms for the same concept, but it's still it's the same concept. Now, you might say, Dr. J, man, you're you're just crazy. Um, lockdown, it's not really what they mean. What they mean is stay at home or recommended to stay at home. Well, recommended is not mandated lockdown like you would for a prisoner, okay? Recommended to stay at home is well, we recommend that you stay home. Why don't they just say that? In fact, it's because they think that the nonconformist and the noncompliant, which is like in certain circumstances, everybody uh, won't follow their advice because they haven't really made sufficient argument. Okay? They haven't provided sufficient rationale to justify it. Yes, lockdown did and is now more commonly shelter in place or stay at home uh, orders. Orders. We're going to get to those orders. I want to recommend to you to pay attention to the words that are being used. The languaging is very intentional, and it's intentionally crafted 
to change the way you think as if it is your idea. Okay, and so again, this is an essential quality of propaganda. If I craft the propaganda, the images, the graphics, the music, the words, the phrasing, the even the cadence of the phrasing and the countenance, you know, in other words, I have a very serious expression when I'm saying what I'm saying, that it increases the likelihood that eventually you're going to actually react to what I'm saying as if it was your idea, as if you thought about it. Okay, that's the finest application of propaganda. Okay, of course, I know most of you hearing this are not falling for it. So please share the words that you're feeling and are most offensive. I, I want to hear what they are, and, and maybe we can talk about them more another time. The next word I want to get into is essential. I find this particularly offensive. The government decided that businesses, persons, activities, places were either essential or non-essential. In fact, the government's still doing that. Different governments, governors, uh, regional authorities, health services, they're still playing this game. A verbal game, this psychological game of trying to convince certain segments, large segments of our population that they are no longer valuable, that they are no longer essential. They're placing value judgment and they're doing it uh, in favor of special interests. So for example, mom and pop, private businesses, private restaurants, private retail businesses, non-essential, okay? Uh, ordered to close, uh, bars, restaurants, ordered to close. In fact, right here in Florida, they ordered another bar to close over this, this ridiculous testing. And they mandated, they, they literally, like men, and, men with guns, went in and closed and locked and ordered them to lock their doors. Okay, There's going to be some great lawsuits coming from the future, but for now, it's just atrocious. I really feel for these who uh, first suffered uh, initially with the, the lockdown, stay-at-home orders, okay, and then were allowed to reopen, and then because of this uh, testing, uh, which we know is fallacious and uh, produces false, false results and so on and so forth, they've been ordered to close again. And also there's an element of contact tracing also. But this idea that Walmart is safer than your local bar is ridiculous. You know, a virus can't tell the difference between a speakeasy and a big box retail store. You, you, you know that. Right? Um, and so large uh, chains, chain restaurants, big box stores, uh, liquor stores are considered essential. But your business, your mom's business, your pop's business, your therapy practice, your healing art practice, non-essential, ridiculous, okay? Um, so you want to you wanna pay attention. Why do they want you to be bankrupt? Why do they want you to not be able to fulfill your life's mission, okay? Um, so you are essential. I want to say that. You are essential. Your job is essential. My job is essential. Your family business is Essential. I'm essential. Everyone is essential. Every business is essential to the owners and operators, to the people who work there, to the community that they serve. Every church is essential. It's essential to the ministers who have a mission from God that they are trying to help and save people. And it is essential to the people who uh, who support those nonprofit missions. And you know, the reason why churches have, one of the reasons why churches have special privileges in the Constitution under federal law and also reiterated under every state law, every state in U.S. territory, is because churches and religious organizations are already considered to be uh, helpful, more helpful than any other business category toward the welfare and the well-being of the average person's daily life. How about that? And that's been understood from day one. Okay, and so these uh, rights that we have to practice our religion and profess to believe, to express, and to practice our religious preferences, okay, are not mm, uh, uh, privileges. Okay, they're not privileges, they're, they're rights, and they're fundamental rights that actually existed, of course, before the Constitution, 
but the Constitution was fabricated from day one to prevent the government from interfering with these rights. And right now, the government is interfering. Make no mistake about it. Now, Dr. J, <laughs> wow, you are so negative. You're a real negative Nancy today. No, no offense to Nancy's out there. Okay, uh, it means important. It means necessary. Why not choose these words? Why not? Why not choose language that's divisive, even if I don't agree? You know, why not just say that we feel that these businesses during this time are more important than others? You're, they're making a value judgment anyway. Why not just say it? And then we can disagree. We can argue over it. We can say that we feel, you know, that we feel that our business, that our mandate, that whatever is is more important than what you're commonly giving us credit for. Okay, so we could say that. All right, let's see. I'm trying to need to increase the gain here just a little bit, I think, on my microphones. Maybe this is it. I'm still practicing with some of this stuff. And if we pick up some background noise, it's probably the air conditioner out here. Okay. In other words, why don't they just say what they believe or what they want us to understand? Why couch it in uh, vernacular that is um, uh, false and misleading? Okay, so taking away your right to work takes away your ability to make a contribution. It takes away your ability to be self-sufficient, both for yourself and for your family. Okay, it makes you dependent. It creates dependency and it creates dependency on an organization, i.e. the government, which does not have the capability to take care of you. The only reason this country works in the first place is because 90 percent of the people in this country are self-sustaining. And so you take away that ability to be self-sustaining and there is no fallback position. There is no a place where the government will take care of you. The government is abysmal at providing health care. The government is abysmal at providing geriatric care. The government is abysmal, abysmal. We're, we're uh, as a developed nation in the world, we're considered the bastard stepchild of health care. And that was before the pandemic. You know, so we're like in 30%, 29th place in infant mortality for the first year of life. There are 30 other countries where if you were having a baby today, where your baby would be, your newborn child would be more likely to survive one year of life than in the continental United States. This is not a glowing not a glowing report on our ability to take care of ourselves, and now we're told we need to be utterly and completely dependent on this uh, broken, we've determined corrupt and inefficient healthcare system. And more than that, now it's not just about healthcare, now it's about government intervention in every area of your life. These shutdowns of essential versus non-essential takes away from many the reason their life matters and has value. Most people spend, as adults, majority of their time at work making a living. Take that away from them for any extended period of time, and their whole life can collapse, emotionally, financially, socially, spiritually. Before pandemic, the average person was living paycheck to paycheck with little or no savings, no more than one or two weeks reserve, tops. Now, what are they doing three months, and now some are talking about re iterating, double down on the lockdowns and on the stay-at-home orders. Now what are they going to do? Okay, Closed permanently, lost forever. We can only guess what the long-term consequences of this will be. My guess is that the actual mortality from this alone will be far greater than what is attributed to any virus. Far greater, the suicides, the deaths, the murders and mayhem uh, and so on that caused by making people who were just three months ago at least getting by in middle class, bringing them to utter destitute. All right, here's the next term. Follow me with this. Social distancing. You know, dry rain, war is peace, ignorance is strength. Being raped can be fun. You can be distant or you can be social, but you can't be socially distant. You can't be social distancing. It's nonsense. 
it's not English. It's not a proper use of English. Now, you'd think that the powers that be, the government and health services and governors and so on would be at least, I mean, 90% of them are lawyers. So you'd think they're wordsmiths and would have at least a high school grasp of common English language. I'm no English teacher, okay? I'm no English teacher, but I know that this is a nonsense phrase and, and there is no way I'm going to understand it. Now, I know you're going to go, Dr. J, oh, you know, uh, you know what they mean. They mean in public, stand six feet apart. Well, why don't they just say, stand six feet apart? And then we can argue with them about why. What, what is the point? What is the purpose? What do they actually think they're going to achieve by telling everybody in the country to stay six feet? Not two feet, not 4.5 feet, not six and a half feet, seven, eight, ten feet, but exactly six feet. Also, what's up with that? Okay, there's no science, there's no empirical studies to show that standing six feet apart has any impact on transmission of airborne vectors of illness. I'm not. Show it to me. If you got, if you got the science uh, that's empirical and it's, uh, you know, not made up by the governor of California, who's not a doctor nor a scientist, okay, nor a very well-educated person, in my opinion. But it, if it's by uh, a scientific uh, institution, some clinical studies, more than one, okay, please put it in the comments. Put a link to it. I, uh, I will stand corrected, and in my next video, I will correct that if you can show me that. For example, there's no study in which 100 people were infected, stood six feet apart from 100 people who were not infected, and quantified as to how many of the non-infected then became infected because they were six foot or less from the other people, and compared that number to another 100 people standing at five, at four, at three, at two, at seven, at five foot one inch, five foot two inch, five foot three inch, you know, that's an empirical scientific study. There's no such thing. I have researched, I have looked, I, I'm, I'm actually a licensed researcher. I, I've been, uh, uh, as a medical uh, professional, I have access to the same data sets and same database that this uh, uh, Fauci brigade has access to. And I have found no clinical trials that uh, empirical studies showing how uh, people standing one foot or 10 feet communicate disease to another person in this way that it's being told to us, not a one. So that means that this number six foot is completely arbitrary, it's completely made up. It's fantasy, okay? Sounds good on paper. And you know, if you make a chart and you show how, uh, you know, if you cough or sneeze and, and, and the velocity of droplets will go two feet and then drop off at four feet and then, you know, in 10 seconds, it'll travel 24 feet. Do you get that the 24 foot could be a problem in this whole stand six feet apart if it is a thing? Okay. And also, there's also, there's just nothing unusual about it. All right. Uh, all right, let's go on. Okay. Let's call it for separation or let's call it mandatory distancing because it has been forced upon us without our consent and it is not voluntary. Remember, if you acquiesce, that could be misunderstood or that could be understood as being an agreement. In other words, that you're volunteering. If you acquiesce, if you don't say, you know, uh, actually, I don't agree to this. I don't agree with this. Is it mandatory or not? Is this a law or not? Is it a crime or not? And under what provision of law is it a crime to stand less than six feet apart from another person? We'll get more into that later. All right. The problem is your brain wants your what you're hearing to make sense. And when you hear terms which are literally nonsensical, it is like putting a square peg in a round hole. You know what that's about, right? Putting a square peg in a round hole. 
The underlying process is a form of cognitive dissonance. The words the publicists are using are chosen intentionally to cause a subtle underlying disturbance, i.e. subconscious itch that you can't scratch. While your subconscious is occupied trying to sort out what the men with guns are trying to say, the very sober, serious men with guns are trying to say, you are not paying attention to the erosion of your rights and the rise of tyranny, for example, like your freedoms are being stomped on. You're not paying attention to it. You're trying to sort out the words that they're using while they are running over you with a truck destroying every fundamental right that you've been guaranteed under the Constitution by the Supreme Court, reiterated in every state law in the United States and U.S. territories. Inside you're going social distancing. Everyone is dangerous. Everyone. Everyone is dangerous now. We're all, we're all hoodlums, potentially Plague Marys. Uh, we're now living in a Walking Dead episode, uh, Zombie Nation. Okay, everyone is dangerous. Everyone's a carrier. Everyone's a vector. We now have to watch out for everyone. However, it's it's the new normal. All right. Inside, you're going social distancing. Everyone is dangerous. I'm not essential. My business, I've been working on for the last. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years is no longer essential or valuable. According to some person, I don't know, not elected or not, just some rando stranger, right? I'm, my whole livelihood is now not essential and may in fact be dangerous to my neighbors. So I need to lock it down. But I'm not a prisoner. I'm not a prisoner. You know, this is voluntary. No, it's not voluntary. Okay. Voluntary uh, inf implies informed consent. That means that also the informed part means that what you're being informed with prior to you being requested to give your consent is actually true. Consciously, you know these things, but deep inside your brain is trying to understand but can't. And that's manipulation. This is how propaganda works. It cause even otherwise bright or intelligent self-aware persons to work against their own self-interest serving tyrants. Okay, what's a tyrant? Tyrant is an individual acting with authority outside of their mandate. In other words, a person that is ordering you around, running or ruling your life, making critical life and death decisions for you personally, you never gave them any authority to do any of that. That's a tyrant. <coughs> Excuse me. We are all in this together. No, we're not. You're having your experience. I'm having my experience. Both are different. Both are different. We're stronger together when we're apart. Together, we're together, but we're on lockdown. We're together, but we're staying in our respective homes, so we can't see or have any direct communication with each other. But to show we care, we have to isolate and separate and stay apart and stay at home and stay the freak away. Stay away from me. Get away from me. You're standing too close to me. Uh, a woman said to my brother in the store the day before yesterday, you're standing too close to me. You're you're violating my space. Okay. No, it wasn't. All of these phrases, let's call them propaganda slogans. Let's call them what they are, propaganda slogans, cause the brain to uh, disconnect because deep down we know they're not true. They can't be true. And those of us who are physicians, scientists, therapists, educators with half a brain who have looked into it have verified that this is bogus, to use a, a term from my generation. And it gets worse. What about suddenly being separated from our sick loved ones in hospitals as they are dying? Not being able to be present to say goodbye to granny, okay? 
because you might make her sick. <laughs> I mean, does that really make sense to you? Do you really get that? Do you really understand that? Okay. Deeply, I believe that you have to think it's not right. It's wrong. You may not know exactly why because you haven't studied the science of these things. Okay. But deep down, you have to know that's wrong. And the people who do that to you are wrong. And they're causing harm to you. And they're causing harm to your family and you're causing harm to your community and they're causing harm to your society and if you acquiesce to it they are taking that as in you are consenting to it which i want to say over and over again consent is not indirect consent is not uh passive it's active consent or don't ridiculous statements we're hearing right now OK, uh, I heard Governor uh, Newsom of California today said, uh, you know, uh, wearing a mask and staying apart from others is the only way to stay safe. OK, that's like when the Nazis uh, put a sign over Auschwitz concentration camp that said, our bite mock fry or work will set you free. Wow. Work will set you free. Right. Mask will set you free. Stay at home will set you free. Uh, no, it won't. In fact, it'll do the opposite. And here's the other one. All these petty bureaucrats who are repeating these phrases and doing uh, various forms of administration orders and rules like local health departments, goose-stepping in line with the party line without doing their own research. It's supposed to be health departments. Independently, why can't an independent local health department do their own freaking research? Why do they have to follow the party line? Why? Befell ist befell, as Herman Hess and other Nazis who were tried at the Nuremberg tribunals after the Second World War said as their primary legal defense about why and how they committed medical atrocities and crimes against humanities um, was because they were following orders. Regardless of whether those orders were legal or not, the Nuremberg Tribunal found that this was not a legal defense for crimes against persons, crimes against humanity, for medical crimes of malpractice, because they were all doctors, right? Or quite a few of them. And the uh, Nuremberg trials found that befall is befall, okay, was not a legal defense, that you couldn't just say, well, the reason why I'm administering this policy, because that's what they were doing, uh, is because I was ordered to do so by my superior. And the trials found that that was not a legal defense and that they personally could be held liable. For the crime. So no, we are not in this together unless my neighbor's going to pay my mortgage and pay my rent, which they've not volunteered to do so. All right, please let me know in the content comments here if you, if you think I'm uh, on the rails, off the rails, whatever. You know, give me a give me a comment. What's your your experience? All right, I got to hustle. I'm going to run out of time here. Here's one: stay at home, stay home, and save lives. Statistics show that many people die at home. Accidents, fires, domestic abuse, alcoholism, drug abuse, child abuse, raping and pillaging, taking place at home, murder and mayhem. In fact, most murders happen at home between family members. So how is stay at home going to save lives? Aren't we better to get outside and have some fresh air, sunshine, exercise, uh, gardening? Aren't these better for your immune system and for your ability to fight infection and for your attitude, which is important, for your emotional health, which is important. Isn't that better than staying at home? Is there any science or empirical study that shows that staying at home saves lives? Again, empirical study. Is there one empirical study, one scientific clinical study that shows that staying at home saves lives? Again, I heard the governor of California say that today. It's ridiculous, and it's not true. There is not. 
How is it possible to prove this? And according to common sense, it's nonsense. Okay? All right. This is called manipulation of the mind, using propaganda to coerce compliance to acts which we are against or which are against our common self-interest and against our innate understanding of what we need to do and what we need to have and where we need to be and who we need to be to survive in the world, which is your right. You have a right to do all those things, not just under the Constitution and state law. You have rights under international law, the UDH uh, uh, R, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, the Nuremberg Code, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There's many international treaties, which the U.S. is a signatory to, which guarantee your right to life, to live the life that you decide that you need to do to survive, not some external government, not some perfunctionary bureaucratic idiot, okay? Just because a government official repeats the same slogan does not make it true. Oh, face coverings are the new mask. According to the state of Florida, health guidance, free people uh, have to wear a mask. And incarcerated persons or prisoners, criminals, convicted criminals, and those in lieu of conviction, no mask uh, is required in prison or jail because all the rules for health being mandated for the free people are actually not being followed in jail or in prison because apparently prisoners are immune to this um, uh, virulent uh, disease that all us healthy free people are apparently subject to. For more information on masks in general and face coverings, that's the new thing, face coverings, in general, see my last video, Truth Bombs number two, why are we wearing masks? And I'll get into a lot of details about why are we wearing masks and what that all means. Masks are menacing, they impede social interaction, they block nonverbal communication, which is the most interpersonal communication. It's actually why we have face, why we have evolved faces, is because we have to see the face of the person to whom we are addressing, to know if they're a threat or not, to know if we believe them or not, to actually understand more than half of everything that they have to say, which is why I'm doing a video, because I know as an audio, you can't see my face, okay? When you're covered up, wearing a hat, cap, sunglasses, and mask, you're a faceless person. You are perceived instinctively through the RSS, through the lizard brain, and through the sympathetic nervous system, you are automatically perceived as being a threat. And then there's the cognitive dissonance because now I have to convince myself that this mask, faceless being, muffled person that I can't really hear because I'm a little bit hard of hearing anyway, this person in front of me is not a threat. And that's what I'm thinking of the whole time I'm in front of you. I call this mask hysteria, okay? Now, let me know what you think about this. The big news on every channel right now is also the number of new cases. Oh, my God. I, I did a quick survey today, and the headline on every single news channel was the explosive number of new cases, and not one single one referenced that the reason the number is explosively higher than it was yesterday or the day before or the day before is because of the ramping up of testing. And so if you test more people, you're going to have more positive results. But as a, as a scientist, as a physician, I can tell you that correlation does not equal causation. How's that relative? Because being exposed to something is not the same thing as being infected with it. That's actually a fact. Here's the next thing. Being infected with it doesn't mean you're going to be sick. We absolutely know scientifically that 98, 99% of people who are infected with this current virus will have no symptoms of illness at all. Nine out of 10. They won't even be able to physically tell that they have gone through the illness and they will have developed immune resistance to it after the fact and so on. And then a very small percentage of those remaining will have a slight cold or flu-like symptom. And then, yes, people with very severe pre- and comorbidities, 
uh, like uh, uh, uncontrolled diabetes, heart disease, cancer, uh, autoimmune disorders, uh, could be anything from AIDS to Lyme's disease or whatever, that they may have a more severe episode. And then just as surely as we know that, if they were treated in the ER with a math protocol, M-A-T-H plus sign, that ER doctors are now starting to recommend that nine out of 10 of them would never need to be on a ventilator. And then nine out of 10 of those people who pass away on ventilators wouldn't. But it all starts here. The numbers create the frenzy, the lemming-like frenzy to be compliant against your self-interest based on exaggeration hyperbole, and in some cases, outright misinformation, commonly known as lying. In other words, the people who are saying this know it's not true. A case doesn't mean you're sick or ever will be. We know the numbers are murky, imprecise, and inflated. Even the FDA states these tests are highly unreliable and prone to false positives and bad results. Also, by the way, I believe everyone's going to be infected with the virus. It's, it's endemic. I, I believe everyone's going to be infected. But for, you know, most people, it's really not going to be a problem. The way we're handling it is the problem and more of a problem and directly will lead to more mortality, morbidity, fatality, suicides, murders, and mayhem. I actually believe a lot of the unrest that we see socially right now is an inverse, was well, actually a direct result of the forced, coercive, manipulative lockdown strategy. And basically, people just got to get out and act out. Makes perfect sense. Predictable as rain that a certain percentage of the population at some point would say, to heck with you, I'm going outside. And I guess since while I'm here, I'm going to break something. If you test more people, you're going to have more results. These numbers are in no way reflect the percentage of people who are actually sick. That's what the science says. Now, there's some people who are saying now that the numbers um, uh, do reflect the number of people who are actually sick. However, uh, uh, science of epidemiology and infectious disease belies a point. Okay, these statements are political and they're social political. They're not scientific. Asymptomatic. You might be sick and don't know it. You could be spreading germs and don't know it. Yeah, well, that might be because all of us are spreading germs all the time. Um, actually, if you do a little bit of research, you're going to find out that most of this, what you call your body, is actually made up of virus, bacteria, and fungus, most of it. We're basically a, a viral soup going somewhere to happen, a bacterial viral soup going somewhere to happen. We're as permeable as tissue paper. The skin has 5 million orifices alone. The skin alone has 5 million orifices, and we outgas fluids gases, and physical substances out of every one of those orifices 24 hours a day. And putting a face cover on is not going to impede that process. You might say, Dr. J, but aren't we spreading germs and killing people by sneezing and breathing? Well, yeah, germs are spread by breathing. They always have been. But evolutionary point of view uh, clearly shows us that this thing that we have, which we refer to as the immune system, was entirely developed to work in that system. That it's a two-way system. We outgas and we exfoliate and we express virus and bacterial debris and the immune factors that our body has productively made to help us fight them. And part of the communication that we have with other people is that we absorb, we breathe particulate matter that includes these immune factors from other people. And that 
acts as little downloads to tell our immune system what's happening in the environment and tells our immune system to step up and to adapt to the external pernicious influence or the external threat. It's a two-way system, and we actually need a little bit of this infectious debris from our environment, and guess what? That's you, you're part of my environment. I need a little bit of your infectious debris for me to be healthy, oh my God. Think it through, take a minute, take your time. Here's another one, contact tracing. That sounds pretty harmless, contact tracing right? I call it forced surveillance, or let's, let's have a much better term, okay? Let's call it unlawful, illegal surveillance. Are you a criminal? Are you engaged in a felony criminal act right now? Are you selling drugs, illegal drugs, not, not the legal kind, okay, but illegal drugs? Are you um, uh, human trafficking, are you engaging in pedophilia and child endangerment? Are you an arsonist? Are you, actually right now, I think that's been taken off the crime list, arsonist. <laughs> there are a lot of people committing arson right now who are not being charged with crimes or going to jail. I mean, last year we had, um, oh, I don't know, we had a town in California that burned to the ground and it was determined that it was literally arson and uh, Paradise, I think it was called, and, and there's now been reparations and criminal prosecutions and so on. However, there are people committing arson in most of the big cities in the U.S. right now, and it's not even considered a crime. They're not being arrested and they're not being charged. Okay, but let's say you're still doing one of those criminal pursuits where they actually do things like wiretaps and surveillance and the police follow you and they tap your phone and and they do all that kind of thing. But, you know, that's surveillance. But isn't there like a habeas corpus? Uh, isn't there like a right to privacy? Isn't there a right of free speech and free association? And don't they have to have a wiretap warrant which is authorized by a magistrate or by a judge under narrow provisions relating to the um, uh, what would be called the interest of the government in pursuing a criminal activity and a signed warrant and a judge is involved and so on and so forth. Law enforcement is involved, and the information that's obtained by the wiretap and by the surveillance, whether it's visual, physical, or electronic, okay, is private to the law enforcement agency. And now we have contact tracing with like apps on your Apple phone and your Android phone. By the way, turn those off. Don't download them. They're, well, actually, you don't have a choice. They're automatically part of all the updates for Android and Apple right now. But you do not have to activate them. In fact, they only activate if you activate a health service app from your local government, and then the contact tracing app kicks in, okay? But it's unlawful. It's illegal. There's no warrant that's been applied for. There's no judge involved that has authorized the warrant. And every state in the country has a wiretap rule, has laws that relate to how law enforcement, there's actually a code of conduct for law enforcement, um, but there's actually a code that says that law enforcement or any other agency of the government cannot just surveil you and follow you without your consent unless they believe you're, con you're committing a criminal act. And yet the contact tracing is ubiquitous, and it means that everybody who accidentally, incidentally downloads and activates the app is going to be followed, is going to be surveilled, okay? Um, if you don't believe this, if you don't understand this, if you have a question with this, please put it in the comment. I'd love to hear from you. But i got to rock and roll here, folks. Here's just a couple more. How about we need to be socially responsible? What is the definition of that? Okay, I want to know what is the definition of socially responsible so I can I can be that right because uh, apparently up to this point <laughs> I've not been being adequately socially responsible as a physician. How do you measure it? So I know if I'm socially responsible enough, you know, it's not just that I want to be socially responsible. I want to be really socially responsible. Okay. Oh, Dr. J. 
You know what I mean. It means caring for your fellow man. Okay, so in context of wearing a mask, i.e. engaging in mask hysteria, on the media they say, if you don't wear a mask to protect yourself, wear a mask to protect others. Oh my God, makes my heart just kind of swell in my chest just to consider it. It's the caring and unselfish thing to do. Is it? Really? All right, let me ask you a question. All right, so why aren't the people who want me to wear a mask, which obstructs my breathing, gives me claustrophobia, interferes with and restricts my communications, exacerbates my pre-existing health issues, makes communication difficulty uh, difficult for me because I'm a little bit hard of hearing, causes stress and miscommunication, okay? How come the people who are ordering me to do this impede my flow of oxygen to defeat my immune system function, to make me more susceptible to being uh, sick, etc.? How come those people are not the selfish ones? So let me be clear. I want to understand. I'm selfish for wanting to do my own health behaviors to be healthy and not be sick, but you're not selfish for making me do your health behaviors, which are inappropriate for me because I have a completely different body type. I have a completely different age from you. I have a completely different lifetime history of illness and injury and predispositions, my pre, my comorbidities than you. And yet you can just glibly tell me one or two things to do. And not only if I don't do them, am I not protecting the public from some illness, but I'm being a bad person, I'm being selfish. The word selfish has been used pretty much as a guilt tool to encourage blind, unthinking obedience. So when public health authorities, when public government officials, when news anchors tell you that you're being selfish because you're not following their government prescribed uh, accessory clothing, you're not wearing government prescribed accessory clothing, okay, that uh, it works especially well with good hearted people and caring people who are a little prone to guilt and shame already uh, due to their past old unresolved negative emotional issues. However, I call this behavior self-reliance. Imagine if self-reliance was no longer the norm or self-reliance was now illegal. Remember, this whole country wouldn't exist without most people being self-reliant. But let's just go into fantasy land for a minute because it's on the table and say, what would the country be like if you were now prohibited? It was even illegal. It was a crime to be self-reliant. And you couldn't even go into a restaurant and order food off the menu. You go to the restaurant and the waiter tells you what you're going to have. Sir, you're going to have tea and a grilled cheese sandwich. But I, I would like some soup. I would like a salad because it's healthy for me. No, nope, no. Nope. We decided when uh, we decided before you came in, because we don't know you, that we believe you will be healthy if you have herbal tea, not green tea, herbal tea, and a grilled cheese sandwich with butter. Now, I'm not opposed to uh, herbal tea. I drink herbal tea. I'm not opposed to grilled cheese. I make a grilled cheese sandwich. I make a mean grilled cheese sandwich. Just so you know, Dr. J makes a mean grilled cheese sandwich. Check back with me someday. I'll do my recipe for you. All right, but aside from that, but if I went into a, um, oh, I don't know, I went into my local Chinese restaurant, okay, to order some Chinese food, you know, some some dim sum, some hog gao, uh, or I went to my Vietnamese restaurant locally to get one of my favorites, you know, my uh, uh, seafood medley po, okay? And and I sat down, I'm all ready to go, and I got my chopsticks, and they went, no, 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 it's herbal tea and, and, and grilled cheese sandwich. We already decided for you what you're going to have. Imagine now that applied to everything. You need to have your car repaired. You take it to the dealership, and they go, you know, we're going to rotate your tires today. And you go, yeah, but I need a tune-up. And they're going to go, nah. <laughs> Actually, we decided that you don't need a tune-up, that you need to have your tires rotated. 
And you go, but my car's not running right. It's burning gas. I don't think half the cylinders are firing on the engine. There's obviously something wrong with the motor. Didn't you see me smoking when I pulled in here? And they're like, well, yeah, we, we saw that. But we have decided that, that you, okay, uh, uh, can only have your tires rotated. And that's going to, that's it. That's, that's that's all you get, okay? Think it through. This is the logical progression. You have no right to decide what's right for you. That right belongs to someone you don't know, who you gave as authority or permission to, who has no legal right to decide for you matters which concern you and your family and your business, even in life or death issues. We no longer have individual rights, we have social privileges, and if, you do, if you're non-compliant to mommy and daddy government, and mommy and daddy health uh, experts, quote unquote, public health experts, mommy and daddy will take away your social privileges. You don't believe me, okay? The New England Journal of Medicine recently published an article by two attorneys in which they said, I'm gonna put the link uh, in this when I post this, uh, they said that we need to balance safety and health with social privileges. And the question I would like to ask them is, I'm not an attorney. Where is the language or where the language is in the law that says that my rights are privileges and not rights? Maybe it's in the public health orders, which are not statutory law. Maybe, is it in the Constitution? Is there is there a provisio? in the Constitution that says that, that actually I don't have rights, that I have social privileges, which uh, can be arbitrarily removed from me by people that I don't authorize to do so, nor that I consent to allow to take away from me. Is that, is that a little provisio? Did the Supreme Court make a judgment, you know, in regard to that, that I'm not aware of? Uh, where or when did our God-given rights, which we have before the writing of the Constitution, that we were born with, you know, the Constitution was actually written, created to protect our God-given rights, our human rights, from the government. <laughs> Did you know that? That's, that's, you know, I mean, it's elementary school civics. Apparently, a lot of people don't know this. The whole point of the Constitution and all the amendments in support of, of clarification of the Constitution was to protect you and me from government overreach. That was the whole point. So our rights are not privileges to be set aside by anyone, much less by any governmental person or agency. Contrary to what has been recently published in the New England Journal of Medicine. Oh my God. Here's another one. Quickly. Vaccine. Vaccine. Oh my God. If you believe you need more info or if you want to decide for yourself to vaccinate or not vaccinate yourself or your child, you're called an anti-vaxxer. In other words, you're called names, anti-medicine, anti-vaxxer, anti-responsibility, social responsibility. You're not you're you're a bad person. You want to kill grandma and and everybody else's children. Uh, anyone who advocates is treated this way. You're not given science or facts. You're called names. Okay? Most people don't know there's actually a vaccine court outside of our normal court system which secretly tries cases of vaccine injury, harm, and death. Why is there a secret vaccine court for injury and death lawsuits if there are not any? That kind of doesn't make any sense, does it? It was created by an executive order of the president. Why? If there's no injury, if vaccines are safe, perfectly safe, why is there a vaccine court? However, you don't have to worry about vaccines anymore. You don't have to worry about mandated, forced, coercive, illegally coercive, mandated vaccines anymore because they don't exist. Why? What, what happened? Well, good news, because now they're preventative medicine. Okay? Boy, that sounds nice. Who doesn't like preventative medicine. I'm a natural doc. I'm a naturopath. I'm an oriental medical doctor. I practice acupuncture and herbology and lifestyle changes, uh, nutrition and yoga therapy and Thai, thai yoga. And, and I am all about the preventive medicine. I teach people about preventative medicine in every class that I teach. That sounds wonderful. However, uh, who doesn't like it? It sounds natural, like vitamins. Uh, it's going to make you healthy, right? 
Uh, you know medicine is only for sick people, right? And it's a fact. Medicine often makes you sicker. We call this side effects. Primary effects of chemical pharmaceutical drugs that cause you harm, injury, and death, and or death. And that's 100% of them do that. Drugs have side effects, some of which may kill you substantially or harm you substantially. Shouldn't you have the right? Don't you have a right to decide the risk or benefit for yourself or make a decision for yourself if you're going to have to be uh, forced to do something that could kill you, that could take the life or cripple or maim or cause harm to your child? Shouldn't you have the right to at least like ask a couple of questions? All right, let me give an example. Let's say uh, you're going to fly on an airplane. You're going to fly from uh, Tampa to Las Vegas to to go to a conference. See, I don't gamble, so I go to conferences in Las Vegas. Well, I used to. They don't have any now, so yes, but hypothetically. Um, uh, uh, and passengers were required at some point to jump out of the plane and land with a parachute. And this point would be randomly determined by the staff where they would just suddenly, in the middle of your flight, open the door and force everybody off of the plane. And if you didn't want to get off of the plane too bad, they would hold you down, put a parachute on you and kick you out the door for your own safety. Well, that's why you have a parachute. For your own safety, Would you give someone else authority to push you out? This analog gets better. You have to use the parachute they give you, and you don't have the right to pack your own parachute, and you don't have a right to inspect the parachute that they give you, the one that was under your randomly assigned seat. Someone else does, and they just say, trust me, and you're supposed to do that. You have to do that. And when you ask what's, what's in the parachute, or can you inspect the contents of your parachute, you're told no. <laughs> It's a trade secret. It's a trade secret. See, when you ask what's in a vaccine, vaccine companies don't have to tell you what's in the vaccine. It's a trade secret, even though it might be dangerous, even though it might have human fetal tissue, and you're a vegan. I don't know. Even though it might have tam uh, uh, it might have tamarisol, mercury, no known level of mercury exposure not toxic but you know you can't ask it's it's a trade secret so they tell you it's a trade secret and they push you out and maybe you survive maybe your chute opens maybe your chute doesn't open um before you say something like um well let me let me say this it appears that they were packed with bricks uh-oh, <laughs> it's a bad parachute. Or it appears it was packed incorrectly and it didn't open. Because it appears that some of the people that were pushed out of the plane don't make it. They don't survive. They splat. They hit the ground. And you know from the headlines that, that parachuting is fun and occasionally deadly. Uh, just this past year in Florida, two people were killed who jumped out of the same plane wearing parachutes, not far from here, Lakeland, Zephyr Hills, and their parachutes did not open, and they fell 4,000 feet with a parachute that didn't open, which is the same thing as falling 4,000 feet without a parachute, okay? So we know that that's a risky business, and if you're going to uh, do a sport parachuting, or if you're even in the government, Green Beret, Special Forces, Ranger, parachute, or what, you know there is a percentage of risk that when you jump out of the plane with a parachute that it may not open and that you may actually die. But you volunteer for that. You consent to it beforehand and you are educated and you know the risk. And more than that, you you packed your own parachute. You know, anybody who would jump out of a plane with a parachute that somebody else packed that they don't know is an idiot. Okay? And yet, that's the same risk of a vaccination. That's the same issue. Would, if you knew that, would you get on a plane even under any conditions or circumstances? I think probably you wouldn't if you really understood that there was a risk of injury or death every time. Medicine without informed consent is not medicine. It can't be. There's no freedom without health freedom. There can't be. What do you think? Let me know. 
bump me up in the comments down here. Let me know. I want to hear what you have to say. And before I go, I want to, I mentioned before that I'm a dean of Soma Veda College of Natural Medicine and the Thai Yoga Center. Soma Veda College of Natural Medicine, or SCNM, is a, is a Florida authorized degree granting institution uh, offering degree programs in natural medicine. And we've got five different degree programs, one of which can be done entirely and completely at home. The Thai Yoga Center is a registered school of Ayurveda, and we have five different certificate programs from entry level to expert and teacher, which will teach you and empower you to have health freedom by learning the principles of natural medicine and medicine that works that you can do at home for yourself, for your family. And if you wanted to make a living, you could do that too. And the shortest program we have, our live uh, practitioner trainings, only 13 days. And the online program is only 164 hours, and you can be certified and you can begin implementing a professional healthcare practice for yourself, your family, and for others literally by this time next month. Okay, I got to go. I'm out of time. Actually, technically, I ran over here a little bit, but God bless. God bless. Take care of yourself, take care of your family. Take care of your friends. Take care of your community. Be bold. Speak out. Let people know what you think. Do not agree to that which you do not consent to from an informed point of view. From the mess to Whatever the genes, it takes. All right, God bless. Have a good day. Intervene. The billboard screams your advertising. Your massive RV. All of these things I come to accept quick and the slow.